So after image recognition, the second example of machine learning is speech recognition, where you are searching anything by voice. Okay, so uh, the Alexa or Siri or e in the smartphones or even in the smart televisions, whenever you uh, do any search, so what will happen? So whatever you are searching, it is just matching your speech and whatever words you are seeing with the actual data that is being fed. For example, you want to listen to some song and uh, that song has a name and with the keyword, for example, currently there is this song uh, that's going on that is excuses. So if you just say that play this song, you, you just say the name, uh, play excuses on YouTube. So it, it will recognize that, okay, YouTube is being said, it means the app that you have to open is YouTube and the song that is mentioned is excuses. So automatically by matching all the words that you are saying with actual data that is in the YouTube, it will play that particular song or it will give you the options that these, these options under your search are available and you can click on anyone. Okay. And this idea comes under speech recognition and it's a very popular application and you are doing speech recognition everywhere. Even if sometimes I want to make a call and I press this button and I ask Siri to make a call to someone. So it means it is uh, just detecting that I am saying the name of certain person who is in my contact list and I want to make a call to it. So it will automatically place a call. So it is only because of machine learning algorithm. Okay. And the data is already there. My contact list is already there and it is searching through it and just making a call. And it is a process of what it is, what actually is happening that your voice is actually converted into text. Sometimes when I search something on my smart TV, so whatever I am saying, you can see that whatever you are saying, your words are being typed simultaneously in front of you. If you are saying, just play this on YouTube. So it will be typing that. It means how the search is happening. It is just converting your speech, your words into text. And it is known as speech to text method or computer speech recognition method. And machine learning algorithms, these are widely used. And in Google Assistant, in Siri, in Alexa, there these speech recognition technology is working. Okay, next is the traffic prediction. This is also one example of machine learning. So this is mentioned that whenever you put your destination on GPS, so the directions are there and also the directions are available also the places which are highly crowded where the traffic is there so it is giving you that uh, the red lines on it the red means it is highly crowded the prediction is that it is now highly crowded so if you want to visit a new place so then we can take the help of google maps which shows us the correct path so it will always give you the path which is short and less crowded Okay, and it will give you correct path with the shortest route and predicts the traffic conditions also for you. And it predicts the traffic conditions such as whether traffic is cleared, it is slow moving or heavily congested with the help of two ways. First is known as real time location. So there are two processes that are going real time location of the vehicle form Google map app and sensors. So whatever your current location is and wherever you want to approach the time it will take your car or your vehicle to reach there on the basis of that it will predict it okay then average time has been taken on past days at the same time so if you are at a certain place there there is certain vehicles who are at the same place and this was the traffic so it will give you an idea okay previously the same vehicle or the vehicle of certain people at the same place with the same traffic uh, took almost two hours to reach to the destination so for you it will be also close to that so the prediction is not actually accurate but it is very close to the accurate so everyone who is using this google map so it is actually helping this app so who is providing the data you who are using the data you are using the google map unknowingly providing the data to them okay when it is detecting your motion your car's motion so it is that you are actually feeding the data into the Google map and your Google map application is learning. So it's not that only you or I are using it. The whole world is using it. It means so much of the data is being fed and on the basis of the output that every people get, it predicts the value for the other people also. 
okay so we are not directly feeding the data sometimes sometimes whatever activities we are doing it is actually giving the data so it takes information and sends back to its database to improve the performance so other than that the recommendations that you get when you go on amazon they give you the recommendations about the uh, products that you can purchase when you go on amazon prime they will uh, give you the recommendations about the movies that you can watch okay so why it is giving me recommendations how it knows that i may want to watch this movie because whenever i have logged into the amazon prime previously my history shows that this, these kinds of movies were my favorite and i used to watch them so next time whenever i visit it again on the basis of my past watches or searches or views it will give me the recommendation similar to that similarly on netflix also okay so machine learning it is also used by various business or e-commerce and entertainment companies such as amazon or netflix for example even z5 and all others they are using this for product recommendations to the user okay so whenever we search for some product on amazon then we started getting an advertisement for the same product while internet surfing on the same browser and this is because of machine learning now this is this is this is also an example let's suppose on amazon i am searching for one dress okay and uh, somehow i may not So uh, later on, I'm not interested to buy it. So what happened? I just close that Amazon site, but I'm on the same browser and I'm searching something else. Maybe I'm uh, surfing uh, and I'm using Facebook. So what will happen? You will see that the same uh, dress will pop up in front of you on your Facebook as recommendation. So how it is happening? That machine is learning and it is following you. Okay, it means the Facebook has also implemented these algorithms where they can track you. okay on the internet so google understands the user interest what what interests your user what kind of clothes what kind of movies and using various machine learning algorithms suggest you the product it how it, it is getting the data why it is recommending you that dress because whenever you visited that site you searched that uh, you looked that uh, dress you checked the price and you checked the uh, you checked the options about it so what you did you actually fed the data to the algorithm that this is the choice of the user okay and based on that it has thrown the recommendations to you maybe the same one or maybe the similar okay if you are not interested there are similar dresses like this have you have you come up, uh, across such thing that whenever you search for a dress and if you don't like there are recommendations there that you might like this also similar dresses it will throw on the basis of your search it means you are feeding the data to it as similar when we use netflix or amazon prime we uh, find some recommendations for entertainment series movies so suppose there is one series that's my favorite and from the past one month i am watching it so in between it will give me the recommendations that like your uh, previous uh, views that your previous interests so these are the series that you might like to watch in future okay so my previous interest is actually a data for it and on the basis of that data it is recommending me new things and this is only because of machine learning then there are self driving cars this is a one of the most exciting application and it is known as self driving cars and machine learning is actually the idea behind it so tesla the most popular car manufacturing company is working on self driving car okay so it is learning from the experiences so so more it is walking on the street and the data being fed to it all the roads the traffics being uh, already informed to it so it is capable of uh, driving on its own so it is being it is using unsupervised learning so unsupervised learning means that that it is not sure that if it is predicting that traffic will not be there but whenever you reach at that place there are chances that traffic suddenly approaches you so unsupervised means everything is not fixed it can it may change at any time okay and it is using unsupervised learning method to train the car models to detect people and objects while driving so next is 
we are done with certain applications of machine learning that you are uh, you are seeing watching every day and uh, you know, don't know that why this is happening so actually machine learning is working behind it next we are working on machine learning life cycle so how you make your machine learn something so what are the steps that follows so machine learning has given the computer system the ability to automatically learn okay and you don't program it it, it is automatically learning from it and how does a machine learning system work so it can be described using the life cycle of machine learning so machine learning life cycle is a cyclic process to build an efficient machine learning project the main purpose of the life cycle is to find a solution to the problem or project so can you see that whenever your machine is learning it goes through these steps first of all data being gathered okay so gathering the data then data preparation then data wrangling then analysis of the data then training the model testing the model deployment okay so the first four steps are all about data you are preparing your data you are making it good you are making it perfect so that you can feed that data to your machine once you are ready with your data you feed that data into your machine and you train your machine okay by feeding the data to it after feeding the data now you are ready to test it so i am testing the model that whether it is predicting it right or not once you are sure that your machine is ready you deploy it deploy it means you just uh, send it in the market you are ready to launch it okay so let's study these steps so these uh, seven steps are again mentioned so gathering data data preparation wrangling data analysis of the data train the model test the model deployment and it's a cycle sometimes you deploy the machine and you find that the machine is ready now your machine will not stop students machine once in the beginning gather the data prepare you by you prepare it that you prepare the data and you do certain steps on the data then you train the data uh, sorry your machine then you test your machine and then you put it in the market after that it's not like this that your machine is now not able to get more data your machine is still getting the data as i told you that this gps system google map system it's it's a kind of app it's kind of a machine so every day when you are using it you are feeding the data into it so it is getting the data again that's why it's a cycle so this process will keep on it is again collecting the data on its own it is training the model it means it is improving the performance and testing and you are putting it in the uh, actual launch phase so for, first of all what is gathering of the data it is a very first step and uh, the main goal is to identify and obtain all data related problems okay so your data at the end is going to solve some problem so whatever data related to that problem is available you try to collect it so gathering means collection of the data what data i want to feed so i have to collect it it's not like that if i want to predict the uh, weather i will feed the uh, road data to my machine no if i want to predict the weather i have to feed the weather data okay so collection of the data related data is the very first step and in this step we actually identify the different data sources okay from where i will get the data maybe i will get the data from the online resources the data is already available so i can fetch it from there sometimes the data is not available you have to create it on your own okay so you can you have to identify the sources from which you can collect the data as data can be collected from various sources for example they can be collected from files from database from internet or even from the mobile devices and it is one of the most important steps the quantity and quality of the collected data actually determine the efficiency of the output i have already told you the more the data the better the data if the data has errors in it obviously the prediction will be more on the wrong side but if the data is correct quality means it is correct okay quantity means more data okay so if the quantity and quality is good so the efficiency of the output will automatically increase the more will be the data the more accurate will be the prediction okay so the following tasks will be performed to collect the data to gather the data first of all we identify the data sources from where i want to collect the data i want to collect the data from files 
if it is not available on internet maybe from some databases maybe from internet maybe mobile okay once i identify the data sources then i collect the data it means i start collecting the data once i collected it from different data sources suppose in the collection phase some data i collected from internet some data i collected from files so in the third step i have to combine the data i mean integrate the data that i have obtained from different sources okay so by performing the above task we get a coherent set of data also called a data set okay now that data set is now available to you to perform the further steps on it so in nutshell this gathering data has these uh, four steps first is identify the data sources from where you want to collect the data from the internet and what sources then when you identify them start collection once you collect the data integrate the data and now your data is ready to pass to the next step next is data preparation so what is data preparation it means students whenever we get the data from certain sources we are not sure that whether that data is accurate or not whether that data is perfect whether that data is ready to feed directly maybe we have to make some modifications maybe we have to arrange it that is known as data preparation okay so after collection we need to prepare it for further steps so it is a step where we put our data into a suitable place and prepare it to use in our machine learning training okay so first step we put all data together and then we order the data we arrange it in certain orders okay and it happens in the following two steps first is data exploration okay in data exploration we explore our data we go over our data that what is the kind of our data what is the type of our data that comes under nature of data okay is it a numerical data when i will come across that part what there are different types of data so we have to check that whether it is the numerical data means it is in the form of numbers or it is a category data yes no true false kind of data so we have to check the nature of our data and we have to understand the characteristics of it the format and quality okay so characteristics means what are the labels what is the format if the data which is numerical it is in decimal it is floating point or it is integer okay and then we have to check the quality quality means whether it is free of error or not maybe maybe sometimes what happen you collect the data and there is this row in which for this column data is available and for the next two columns data is missing so that data is a waste so we have to remove that row so it means this is actually decreasing the quality so you have to remove it so a better understanding of data leads to an effective outcome okay in this we find correlation general trends and outliers this we will discuss data pre processing first of all we are exploring the data then we are doing the pre processing okay okay so pre processing now the next step is pre processing of data for its analysis okay now what is data wrangling data wrangling is the process of cleaning and converting raw data into a usable format i said that this data is not good for me so i have detected it in the data preparation now my main motive is just to clean it so that i will do in the data wrangling okay so data wrangling is the process of cleaning and converting your raw data into a usable format it is the process of cleaning the data select the variables that you want to use so suppose i have data in which there are 10 columns but there are two columns that i don't need for that machine so i have to select these three only for that okay and we need to transform it into a proper format to make it more suitable for analysis in the next step and it is also one of the important because in this phase we are actually doing what we are cleaning the data okay and cleaning the data it also includes that whatever missing values are you have to clean them duplicate data missing values i gave you the example duplicate data mean there are two rows okay, this column this column this column has one value and then there is one more column in which the same value is repeating the same two values so i have to work on it invalid data invalid data mean the data i have collected it is numerical all the data is numerical and then there is one row in which the correct data is available it means that is invalid okay then there is certain noise so by noise i mean so
so here we are working on uh, integers the numbers so what is noise so whenever you uh, collect the images the so data is not always numbers sometimes we have to collect the data in the form of images image data okay so whenever you click an image what happens maybe due to disturbance your ca camera shakes and the image becomes blur or maybe the uh, the person or the view whose image you are taking maybe it is moving so what will happen your image will get blur the data will get blur so what will happen it means the noise is being introduced so you have to enhance the quality of the image by removing that noise okay so you can use different filtering techniques to clean the data it is mandatory to detect and remove the above issues because it can negatively affect the output of your final machine okay after that the next step is data analysis so we have done we have actually gathered the data we have collected the data after that after collecting the data we are preparing the data it means we are just exploring the data that if there are missing values or something like that after that we are removing those values data wrangling means cleaning now we need to do the analysis so in analysis you have cleaned and prepared data from the previous step and now you are feeding that data for the analysis step so, so first of all the main aim is to do the analysis okay by analysis means for this data that you are getting which technique will be best which model will be best you can you want to apply classification on it you want to apply regression on it you want to apply cluster analysis or association so analysis means you have data with you the data is free of error and everything data is ready now you do the analysis that like i told you that you are you are just plotting that data and you check that which model is actually best suited for this data after that now you have decided on the model also now you have to train the machine okay and by training means you actually feed the data so we use data sets to train the model and using various machine learning models that we have training a model is required so that it can understand the various patterns rules and features available in your data set now you have feed the data you have fed the data now you are ready to test the model so once our machine learning model has been trained by a given data set we will test it so in this in this step we are actually checking the outputs accuracy okay by giving it a test data set so testing the model determines the percentage accuracy maybe the output it is predicting 100% accurate maybe it is 98% accurate so that comes under the test deployment the last step is to do the deployment where we deploy the model in the real world system for example so suppose you will get the project of google maps so you did all these steps after doing all these steps now you want to put it into its place so that everyone can use it the real world people can use it okay you means you are launching it it means the deployment so in the above prepared model if the above prepared model is giving an accurate result you are sure that it will predict accurately and people can use it and it is giving it at a good speed then we deploy the model in the real system but before deploying the project we will check whether it is improving its performance using available data or not but before deployment this step is also important that whether it has the power to gain more data from the real world or not and by using that data is it capable of improving its performance on the day to day basis if yes then you launch it and it is similar to making the final report of a project so de deployment means now you are making the final uh, report that that this is the procedure this is how you can use it these are the features it is ready and you deploy it so this is the last step and i hope that this is clear to all of you so with that i am uh, ending this class and i hope you uh, got a good idea of the classification of machine learning and uh, what are the applications of machine learning and what are the steps through which your machine life cycle goes when you train your machine so with that i am ending this class thank you